It is the goal of most programmers to get that software development job. Whatever vertical you're in, that's what you want. The process of learning that skill, building up your portfolio, applying to these jobs then in hopes of getting that job, it's all we could ever ask for. But there's one part in there that I did not mention, and that is in between applying for jobs and getting the job, the developer job interview. Because there are a lot of different skills that it takes, not just programming skills, to pass that developer job interview. And it is also a skill if you get rejected from a developer job and using that experience to better yourself for the next opportunity. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you about how to handle that rejection and how to move forward without just throwing it by the wayside and forgetting it ever happened. And if you haven't been rejected from a developer job or any other sort of job, well, I think you'll find value in this video as well because we're gonna be talking about how to best prepare for that developer job and kind of what it takes to pass it, if you will. Everyone knows that rejection is a part of life. However, if you have been spending the past four years in college and outside of college trying to learn programming, or maybe you've been self-taught for the past one to two years and you spent all of this time with the ultimate goal of becoming a professional software engineer, getting hired by a particular company, and then you get rejected by that company, that rejection is a little bit harder to deal with. Because if you're anything like me, and I know this is a bad habit of mine that I think I've really improved on since my younger years, and that is trying to block out negative experiences, trying to sweep it under the rug. Oh, I got rejected, let's just forget about that, I'll move on to the next one, because I don't wanna stress about something. I don't wanna have to worry about something that I have no control over anymore. However, there is valuable lessons in your own experiences throughout life, and there's a lot of learning that you can do when you get rejected from a developer job interview that can help you get that next job so you don't have to face that rejection again. Now, how to handle being rejected from a developer job interview? And one more caveat, I am going to definitely move this office back to the way it was before. I don't really like this setup too much. I just wanted to say that, but let's talk about it. The emotional response. Now, I don't like to tell other people how to feel about things because your feelings about particular instances may be different from how I feel about those instances, but it doesn't mean one is right and one is wrong. So I can't tell you how to feel about being rejected from the developer job interview, but if I could advise you, don't just sweep it under the rug. Don't forget that it ever happened, move on to the next one, because like I said before, there are valuable lessons to be learned from your experience. And that is the advice that I need to give you, is do not forget that it happened, go back and try to figure out what went wrong. The very first step in that, and this is us moving on into kind of how to handle the rejection beyond the emotional response, and that is ask for feedback. We're getting a little bit more logical here. So you wanna ask for feedback. Sometimes you won't hear anything back, sometimes you will, but those who were in the interview with you, whether that be the developer team or a project manager or it was the HR person, email them. Whoever your contact is there who you've been talking to, email them and ask them what happened, but in a more specific way that's easy for them to answer and that is very polite coming from your end because you don't wanna burn any bridges and you don't wanna just be a mean individual because they rejected you from a job interview. Just ask them, hey, I would like to better myself and improve myself for the next developer job interview or opportunity that I have. So I am really curious why exactly didn't I get the job? Were my skills not up to par? Did I do poorly in the technical interview? Um, maybe it was some of my projects or was it just a different type of fit? And if they respond, that's good. If they don't, you know, that could happen as well. But if they respond, you also have to read between the lines and whatever their response is because they're not gonna straight up tell you if you're a bad culture fit because your behavioral aspect in the interview wasn't up to what they wanted because at the end of the day when they're hiring someone they want to make sure that the person that they're hiring is someone that they want to work with day in and day out so i don't know if they're going to tell you that but if they say well we got someone more experienced or whatever it is use that feedback to improve in that area but also don't take it too much to heart just read between the lines and try to get some valuable feedback and you have to gauge whether or not that feedback is actually valuable 
or if they're just kind of BSing you because they decided to go another route. So that's what you can get from them. The next thing you can do overall is reflect on the interview. They answered what they thought you did wrong, but what do you feel like you did wrong? And you have to be honest with yourself. What did you feel went well? What do you feel may have went wrong? Where were you confident the most? And where did you lack a little bit of confidence? Was it the technical interview side? Was it the behavioral interview side? What step in the interview process did you get rejected? Were you one step away? Was it the very first step where you actually talked to someone? You talked to the HR rep before on the phone before you ever went into the office or hopped on a Zoom call, I don't know how they do it now and in order to talk to the development team or did you meet with the development team after hr and you talked about some of your projects maybe you did the technical whiteboard interview if, if that company did that you have to be honest with yourself and figuring out like i said before what went well what did not where your confidence was lacking and where it was high because those areas where your confidence was lacking is probably where you were lacking in that interview and that's what you need to improve which brings us to our next point, improve where you're lacking. Based on the feedback you received, based on your own recollection, which I would weigh a bit heavier than the feedback you received from somebody else, improve it. This could be coding projects, the technical interview, promptness, your resume, how it's formatted, what's on it, the knowledge of their company, or even how you formatted an email. Or it could have been due to your soft skills. I wanna address this first because I'm not very good at teaching in this space in terms of soft skills because I feel like it's something that's difficult to teach and learn because it's kind of changing who you are. Some people are naturally open and, and easy going with other people. Other people are a little bit more reserved. It's people's personality that, that kind of makes up their soft skills. So it's, again, a hard thing to teach and learn. But if I were to give you some advice, if you know that the soft skill aspect are where you're lacking, which Soft skills are complementary to hard skills, whereas hard skills are, you know, your programming skills and your knowledge and all that stuff. Your soft skills are how you interact with people and how you communicate with them. So in case you didn't know what soft skills were, but just a few tips. If this is what is keeping you from getting that job, at least that's what you think. A few things. Look them in the eyes. Don't stare at them. Don't, don't just be all creepy, like stare at them with wide eyes, but you know, look at them occasionally more, more often than looking away especially when you're talking don't look down at your resume because it's easier and you don't want to make eye contact because something's in front of you and it's easier pumpkin it's easier to just kind of like look around or hold something and fidget with it or whatever it may be don't do that you have to be able to look at the individual and it's old sales trick look look in between the eyes wherever it may be instead of in their eyeballs okay but look them in the eyes when you look away too much they're going to think you're lying because that's what liars do the next part when they nod you nod it makes them think that you're listening in agreement to what they're saying. I kind of addressed this next one previously, but don't fidget, don't fiddle around, don't you know, be messing with things too much, don't be clicking your pen, whatever it may be. Be a bit more calm, a bit more cognizant of what you're doing when you're talking. I know I talk with my hands a lot. I think that's perfectly okay. Maybe not too animated or too much, but a little bit, maybe a little bit less than what I do, I don't know, but don't fidget around or anything like that. Basically, and this is why I'm always hesitant talking about this, because if that's not you, you kind of have to con them, but only in your soft skills. Don't, don't try to con them in thinking that you're an amazing programmer when you're really not, because that's gonna be quickly found out on the job. And that's my, my personal advice. I know some people may advise against that for some reason, but hey, anyway, if you're a good programmer and you know that you would be a good fit for this job, well, it could be the interviewer's bias that could keep you from getting that job even though you're perfectly qualified. Just like many individuals can do the job but happen to fail the technical interview aspect because they just didn't remember that particular algorithm, technical question that they were asked about. The next part of this is always be learning. Now that is a very broad term, but I really just wanna mention this because it's very easy to get lost in the interview process and trying to pass the interview that you start to neglect the skills that you'll be using on the job. The interview is a big part of it and being prepared for that interview behavioral and the technical part of it is kind of what is keeping you from getting that job if you're not very good at it. But don't lose the skill that you need to do the job in pursuit of learning the skills that it takes to pass the interview itself. And continuing to learn, building your own web apps or whatever your skill is will not only 
better your skills and keep them nice and fresh, but they can also look good on your portfolio. So overall, just do your best to perfect these aspects of the interview and of this whole entire job process. The skills to do the job, that should be a given because that's kind of the main thing that's going to allow you to do that job. The skills to pass the technical interview because that's a beast in and of itself. The skills to be likable, the soft skills, because you don't want anyone's bias or those you know, small details to hinder your ability to get the job because at the end of the day, if you know you can do that job, do what you can to get it. And a random tip, make sure you know about the company for which you're applying. You may you know, be applying to Facebook or to one of these big companies where you may already know what this company is, but if you're applying to Norfolk Southern, uh, the intermodal department is where I used to work. What does intermodal mean? Well, it means this container that holds all of this product and whatnot. It goes on the ship and from the ship to the railway and from the railway on a truck and there to a warehouse or wherever its final destination is intermodal. So make sure you know those aspects of not only the company in which you're applying, but also the portion of that company in which you'll be working. <laughs> because at the end of the day, you can't just go in there and they ask, so why are you interested in this company? Or what do you know about this company? What do you like most about it or your understanding of it? And then you just have nothing to say because you don't know about it. And you can't do that. So just random tip here at the end of this video, that's make sure you know about the company and the team for which you're applying. But that's all I have to say on the matter. I hope the next job interview that you go through has a better result than the last one, assuming you are one of the individuals who got rejected from a job interview. But also remember, it's just part of the game. It happens. You're going to get rejected. You're going to be accepted. Maybe next time you'll have three different offers from these three different interview process at these different companies in which you're applying that you can negotiate with and use one contract to leverage the other, whatever you want to do, and who knows? Maybe this was not necessarily a setback, but just building up for something bigger for the future. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, leave it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you like computer science, software engineering content. Hit the bell if you're already subscribed so you get notified every time I upload a video, which isn't too often, so you're not gonna get crazy amount of notifications. I think that's all I have to say on the matter. I'm ready for this office to get back to that corner over there. <laughs> I'll see you on the next one.